in a wood chipper. That sounds like something Jake would do. <laughs> you could have said just paper chipper. Yeah. I thought it was more appropriate to say wood chipper. All right. He was implying that Jake would burn my paper in the wood. All right. Jake would not. Who, who, uh, <laughs> who can tell me which one is which? Punch. How about Evan? I did not. Um, um, yeah, all right, Arch. M G the uh, uh, Why? Read your notes again. Because it's higher, it's actually the anode. Well, uh, I hope you have that written down. Yeah? yeah? Okay. Good. So that's what we're practicing, Evan. No big deal. Yeah. MG is higher on table J. What's higher on table J mean, Blake? Uh, it's more reactive. Good. More reactive. So here's another question. Steph's going to answer this. Which metal is more likely to be oxidized? Why? Or how'd you figure it out? Yes, I explained that in lab this morning, the other day, or you just figured it out? Very good. So her logic is perfect, and that's where I'm going with this. Good job. This is more metallic than this. Why? Because it's more reactive. So this is actually something that ties in the beginning of the year. Oh, let me get my gizmo out here. All right, so over here. I'm gonna look over here. You got group one, group two. What do we know about these two groups? They're strong. They're the most Good. Reactive. Strong metals, the most reactive metals. Down. So the further to the left, the more reactive it is. So MG is further to the left. Nickel's way over here. Okay. Nickel's a good metal for like structural things. Okay. But not for chemical things. We'll couple say. All right. So so magnesium is a better metal for reacting. So magnesium is the anode for that reason, and like Steph said, all good metals like to lose electrons. Mg loses two electrons, becomes Mg plus two, so it can have a stable outer shell. Complete octet. So we've talked about that earlier in the year, it's sort of tying in here, that this one would rather be oxidized because it's more reactive. That's what metals do, they oxidize, they lose electrons. So that's another question if you look here in 72, it kind of talks about that. Another question the regions will ask, like which one's gonna be oxidized, which one's reduced? Anox, red cat. Anode is oxidized, reduction at the cathode. So the way Steph explained it was very good, but the way you could also understand it is if you know that's the anode and you memorize anox, red cat, that's another way to figure it out, okay? So it's oxidized because it's the anode. All right, so yeah, MG's the anode, NI is the uh, cathode. All right, so um, 71. What is the total number of moles of electrons needed to completely reduce six moles of Ni plus two ions? And if you didn't have any idea how to do this, or you were confused, I can understand because it's a weirdly worded question. Basically, it wants to know how many electrons do you need to reduce Ni plus two if you have six of them? So if you have six moles of Ni plus two, so six Ni plus two, that's what that means. What's the total positive charge if you have six Ni plus two, Zach? So if you have six Ni plus two, what's the total positive charge? Well, that's two, but I have six of them. Uh, 12. 12, so it's a total of plus 12. So Bree, how many electrons do I need to completely reduce that to zero? 12, so you need 12 electrons. The answer to this question is 12 electrons. I'm trying to explain it in a different way that might help you understand. So really what this means is if you have six Ni plus two, it has to gain uh, 12 electrons to go to zero. Remember I told you last week and this week, the total positive charge is equal to the number of electrons. So if it's a positive 12, then you need 12 electrons to cancel that out. That's how you answer 71, the answer is 12 electrons. Um, you don't have this. I'm sorry. I missed that. It's right there. Okay. So the half reaction. Miguel needs that also. Who does? Kevin Miguel. Didn't I just give it to you? No, you just only did it. Well, I mean, you can follow, but catch that to your friend there. Okay, so let me show you the half reaction here um, for this. So. The, the answer for 71 is 12 electrons, but here's what it looks like. You have Ni 
plus two, gaining two electrons, forming Ni0. That's what's happening when Ni goes to Ni solid. That's the half reaction. But again, they said six moles. So if you put a six here, you have to make 12 electrons. All right. So anyways, that's 71. 72. Uh, one metal on table J that is more easily oxidized than Mg. Ryan, how would we answer that? You just find something on table J that's more reactive. So I did. Perfect. I just did Rb. Yep. Rb works. Anything above Mg on table J is an answer. How many are above it? Like 10? Eight? Let's figure it out. There's a bunch, right? Okay. So yeah, any of those above Mg works. I, I don't need to list them all. But any of the ones above Mg would be more easily oxidized. All right, 73. Jake, function of a salt bridge. Yep, good. Allows the ions to travel or migrate. Okay, the salt bridge is just like this YouTube here, right? So the ions can travel or migrate between the two half cells. Okay. Um, if I wanted to do the oxidation, look up here, please. Oxidation half reaction, that would be Mg0 <coughs> going to Mg plus two, plus two. It would be Mg0 turning into Mg plus two, losing two electrons. So I'm just reviewing that again. That if you're given a reaction, I expect you guys to be able to do this now. You should be able to do the two half reactions, especially if it's already balanced. If it's already balanced, that's easy. You don't have to do any coefficients. So Mg loses two, nickel gains two, and as a result, Mg would get skinnier. Anode would lose mass, and the fat cat, nickel cathode, would gain mass. Right? We showed that video yesterday. So that was 71, 72, 73. Very typical Regents questions there. Okay? Especially 73. They love to ask the function of the salt bridge. Love, they're obsessed with that question. So, I mean, it's not all the time. So, it's easy to remember. Now, 72, not as common, but hopefully that one's not hard for you. 71 is kind of rare. So, if that was confusing, I wouldn't sweat it too much. Oh, now the interactive part of class. Who wants to come up here and draw, not on this thing, on the paper, the uh, flow of electrons through the wire? Who could show me on the wire how the electrons move. Come on up. Use the old red pen here. Wait, so like the flow of electrons, the flow of through, electrons the wire, right? through the wire, right? That's how that's where the electrons go, through the wire. Oh wait, I'm frozen on this thing, sorry. Very good. The electrons are lost from the anode. That's your Leo. Oc Leo is what? Lose electron oxidized. Good, so losing electrons. This is oxidized. The electrons travel through the wire. And nickel is GER. Gain electrons reduced. Good, gain electrons reduced. You'll probably remember that for the rest of your life. All right. No, I will. Uh, that's 71, 72, 73. Moving on. Here we go. Now, the bottom one here is an electrolytic cell. Someone tell me, how about uh, someone who wasn't here yesterday? Isla, how do I know looking at this that it's an electrolytic cell? And if you don't know, it's okay. In other words, let me rephrase that. How is this different than the one we just looked at? Has a battery. Very good. This needs a battery. Electrolytic cells need a power source. If you remember that, you're in good shape, okay? All right, so in, in here, you can see it better on your sheet, I, a little bit better. You have Cl minus, Na plus, and then molten NaCl, meaning liquid salt, okay? You have an anode, you have an, a cathode, the anode is uh, positive, cathode is negative, and there's the reaction inside here, okay? So when the switch is closed, which electrode will attract the sodium ion? two ways to answer this. Cations go to cathode, anions go to anode. Or, look at the charge. If this is a negative uh, charge on this bar here, and this is a positive charge, and sodium ions, sodium ions are positive, Edwin, does it make sense that the Na plus ions would be attracted to the negative plate or the positive plate? If, if Na is positive one, would it make sense that the, these Na plus ones would kind of be attracted to the negative 
um, cathode or the positive anode? Which one makes sense to you? Uh, positive would go to the negative. Positive would go to the negative. So what's the answer? When the switch is closed, which electrode will attract the sodium ions? So you're right. Cathode. Cathode, very good. The answer to 74 is the cathode. The Na plus will migrate towards the negative plate. Opposites attract with electricity and magnets. So the Na's would all kind of go over here. Yes? Good, nice. So all the Na pluses will go to the cathode and all the Cl minuses will go to the anode. They didn't ask that. What is the purpose? If you get 75 wrong, you should be ashamed of yourself. And I'm just being honest with you. So I'm not gonna ask anyone to answer it. I won't embarrass anybody. But nobody should get 75 wrong. Everybody, even a little kid, knows what batteries are used for. Batteries are used for power, electricity, a source of energy. Uh, I don't know how you wanna word it, but that's, that's the purpose. The purpose of the battery is to provide electricity, provide power, provide whatever, okay? So the reason I was so dramatic when I said that is because there's so many hard questions on the regions. If you get that, you cannot get that wrong, right? If you get 74 wrong, I understand, I do. But 75, everyone knows what a battery is, right? Be mad at me if I got that wrong. Uh, yeah, I would be very upset. If anybody got that wrong, I would just <laughs> squeeze my temples. No, well, I didn't See, get it wrong. So. I can't grade your test, but well, you, no, I the teacher you. is right there grading it next to me, and they would send you off. I would probably say, all right, let me know if someone gets that wrong, so I can go to their house and slap them. So we wouldn't be balling. <laughs> Um, you're not gonna get that wrong. Okay. If you came to my house truck saw me, I'd catch your hand and I'd put you <laughs> I'd put you into the Batista bomb so far you wouldn't be fine. <laughs> Seventy six. Write the balance half reaction. Yeah, the whole situation is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> write the balance half reaction for the reduction that occurs. Okay. So you got anox red cat, anode is oxidized cathode is reduced. So if you have trouble with these three, well, at least 74 and 76, I can understand. We hadn't done many yet. Um, but so if you got trouble, let's do it right now, obviously. So reduction occurs over here, right? Because anox red cat. And we just said in 74, Edwin said the Na pluses are going to that. So if Na plus is being reduced, what does that mean, Shelby? If Na plus is being reduced. Is it losing or gaining electrons? Gaining. And if it's Na plus one, how many electrons is it gaining, Xavier? One. So here's the answer to 76. Na plus one plus one electron yields Na zero. And if you didn't get it right, again, I can understand at this point, that's why we're doing practice problems, right? And I got more, we're gonna be practicing. So that's what's happening here at this electrode, it's different. Here's what's happening at the other one. You have Cl minus losing an electron and becoming chlorine gas. It's losing one electron and becoming chlorine, chlorine gas. I actually need two of those. So I actually need two of those. So the Cl minus in the salt, uh, liquid salt, is losing electrons and being oxidized. That's what's happening here. So some of you might be looking at this saying, how am I supposed to figure that out on my own? The way you're supposed to figure it out is if you understand reduction means gain electrons, you should at least be able to get something close to that, that the Na plus is gaining an electron. That's my hope. All right, so that was that worksheet. Um, everything about this electrolytic cell is the same. Anox, red cat. Anode gets uh, skinny. Cat cathode gets fat. Um, this will deteriorate eventually. What else? Uh, electrons flow from anode to cathode, same rules. The only difference is this needs a power source. This needs a battery to perform chemical reactions, whereas this one up here, this one is a battery. So it's using chemicals to produce electricity. It's the opposite, okay? It's the opposite. Okay, um, take out your notes for one more example, and then I'll give you some uh, practice problems here to work on in class. Yeah, uh, hit the lights on the way up, please. She dropped her pencil. As you go around. These chairs, I can't reach that thing. Yeah, these chairs are nice, but like I don't like them. Lights, uh, please, Edwin. Bye.
Alright, here we go. Yeah, Mr. McCoy comes to my house for the sole purpose to say. Okay, draw this, please. Uh, wait, let me think this through. Okay, this is gonna look really stupid, but that's okay. I don't even know how to draw this. <laughs> that's a spoon. Yes, that's a spoon. Very good. It's a little tiny baby spoon. All right, so you got a spoon. You got uh, another piece of metal in here. This spoon is your uh, cathode, the cathode's over here, your anode's over here. Inside this beaker, the solution, so in here we have uh, silver nitrate solution. Oh, and this anode is silver, AG. So this bar is a sil silver bar, silver nitrate solution in here, and you hook it up to a bag. So we have an electrolytic cell. And I only really have one question I'm gonna ask you. Two, two So the first one, write the reduction half reaction. So that's kind of the first thing. Second, uh, how many moles of electrons are transferred? Transfer have two Fs or two Rs? No. Just one F, one R, you sure? Yeah. Yep. Right. Maybe that's my problem. Anyways, how many moles of electrons are transferred? So first one, write the half reaction that occurs uh, for the reduction in, the, in this uh, half cell, or this uh, electrolytic cell, and how many moles of electrons. Once you do this, you'll answer that. So the only hint I'm going to give you, here's your anode, here's your cathode, and ox red cat. AgNO3 is in here, but AgNO3 dissociates into ions. Ag plus, NO3 minus. So you have a bunch of Ag plus in here, and you have a bunch of NO3 minus. You have to figure out which ions are migrating to which one in order to figure that out. Yes, this is not that easy. And remember, next week, I'm going to show you a voltaic cell. I'm going to show you an electrolytic cell. This is electrolytic. I'll show you, and I think it'll help some of you really, really understand it better than just looking at pictures. like this with a spoon or a fork or a knife in it, they want you to do something with the spoon, the fork, or the knife. You're not going to just draw that for fun. There's something involving the spoon here. What is this? That's from yesterday. You need to copy this down. Oh, it's metal. Metal. Steel. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Mr. McCoy, can I go in the bathroom? Can you go over this first? Yeah, I guess. I said there's something significant about the spoon is because uh, 
that's the half reaction we're focusing on. So that's why. So the answer number one involves the half reaction that occurs at the spun. Oops. Punch, you got it. Why would the spoon be in this solution? Because you want a silver plate. You want to plate the spoon with silver, so you have a silver spoon. How does that happen? The silver jumps onto the spoon when it gains electrons. So silver ions. Silver ions floating in the solution, when they touch the spoon, the electrons combine with Ag, reduce it. So Ag plus gains one electron and turns into Ag zero. This is silver metal that will plate on the spoon. That's the reduction half reaction. This is being reduced by one electron, forming Ag zero. So that's the answer to number one there at the spoon. So that's reduction. And ox red cat. Cathodes reduced. There's your half reaction for reduction. How many moles are being transferred? One. Only one electron. Now, if for some reason you put a two here and a two and a two or a three, 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 then you would write two or three. Depending on how you did it, you could actually have different answers. But one was all we need. Questions? Okay, good. We got some time to do these, uh, these worksheets here. Um, yeah, we'll do these. Uh, yeah, we'll do this one. This looks long, but it's actually not. So, Ryan, you can go on. So we're doing these right now. I mean, you're in the meter of your row. I'm going to go to this class. Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah. No, you're not. Uh, yeah. No, you're not. What, what, what's the I'm criteria? A master. What's the criteria for leader on this class? I actually have more records master. than Zach does, so that makes me a leader. Oh, I'm a Kahoot master. Okay. You have chemistry records? No. I have more records. Okay, so um, I gave you four electrolytic cells. So one and two on this side, and three and four on the other side. You can see the one on the back has a metal spoon in it. So it's very similar to this example right here. Different question though. So go ahead, <coughs> read the uh, little paragraph, look at the picture, answer the questions. I'll give you uh, a little bit of time, then we'll go over these. These are from Regents exams.
I'm gonna add down so six more for me. Why you didn't Yeah, I, I would love to play basketball again. Come for us. But, uh, 100%. Can't do it. 